What's up, everybody, and welcome to the X's and O's. This one is for the featured prelim bout of UFC 300 between Yuri Prohaska and Alexander Rackett. So if you're new to my X's and O's series, I'll go ahead and link the playlist down below. I'll put the, uh, the timestamps down there as well. I've already broke down several fights for UFC 300, so be sure to check those out. But first, I'm going to give a quick summary of what we're looking at here, a quick preview. We'll get into the tail of the tape, and then I'll lay out some of the technicalities. We'll get into some of the numbers uh, and break down each guy and how I see them winning uh, and the fight playing out if each guy were to win. So this is a non-biased breakdown. But let's hop right into uh, a quick preview of what we're looking at here between Rakic and Yuri Prohaska, which is none other than guys inside the UFC light heavyweight division. It's one of those divisions that's not exactly the deepest in terms of talent, right? It's not like the bantamweight division. It's not like the lightweight division where it's just stacked from number one all the way to 15. We're just loaded with contenders. Where in the light heavyweight division, the top five, six, seven, eight guys are really kind of head and shoulders above the back end of the guys that are ranked inside the division. But when we look at Yuri and Rakic, these are two guys that are both coming off crazy injuries. I know Yuri fought uh, Alex Pineda. He didn't exactly look like himself in that matchup, but he vacated the title. And he's a guy that's only had a few fights inside the UFC, is already one of the biggest names in the light heavyweight division. And he's going in there against Rakic, who has been away for quite some time. His last outing was against Jan Blahovic. He blew out his knee. So he's been away back since 2022. So what we're looking at here is two explosive but very different athletes inside the light heavyweight division. Like Yuri Prohaska, 29 wins, four losses. He has had an extensive career prior to getting to the UFC, where Rakic, 14 and three, a little less experience. I don't think any of that plays a factor in this matchup. When we look at the size, both guys match up incredibly well to each other here. Everything virtually identical, as Mike Goldberg would say. So very close here. But when we get into Alexander Rakic, this is a guy who has some nasty, nasty leg kicks. And we saw him implement those against Jan Blachowicz. Now, Jan is one of those guys that has, you know, he does a great job at defending against leg kicks, right? We saw him out there in his last time out against Alex Pereira. He had some trouble with the leg kicks of Pereira. And when we look at Rakic, I do think that Rakic is going to take a little bit from what Poetan was able to do against Yuri in Yuri's last fight, which was for the vacant title which was bang leg kicks all day long on Yuri Prohaska because Yuri is very heavy on that lead leg. He's very wide in that samurai karate taekwondo-esque style that he has that is incredibly unpredictable. His hands are very low and he does not do a very good job of getting out of the way of leg kicks. And we saw that had a huge impact in the way that fight played out was uh, Poetan beating up the lead leg of Yuri Prohaska. And if you were going to bring another guy to the table that could implement a similar game plan in terms of beating up that lead leg, it's this man right here in Alexander Rackage. Because out of 14 wins, nine of those by knockout, one by submission, three uh, by decision. So Alexander Rackage, I think it would be safe to say this man is a finisher. We know about the kicks this man has. He has legit power in his hands. And whenever Rackage is throwing something, it has bad intentions behind it. He's not really looking to set things up and really put combinations together. It's all about brute power. And this guy's just a brick, man. He is a, you know, he's a marauder in this division. And when we kind of get into some of the numbers with Alexander Rakic, you know, four, uh, four strike, significant strikes landed per minute, absorbed 2.3. So I know that this is just data, but when we look at some of the numbers, as I mentioned before, Rakic throws a lot of powerful shots at you, right? He's not some guy that's just sitting, looking there, trying to pepper you with a jab, score on the judges' scorecards. Like, that's not the approach of Alexander Rakic. Everything that he throws is with bad intentions, and it starts with the leg kicks. And we've seen Yuri have issues with that, so I think his game plan is going to start and stop with banging leg kicks. But outside of that, when Rakic decides to bite down and step in and throw something, I mean, this guy has serious power in his hands. And when we look at the striking accuracy, you know, 50, uh, 50%, 365 significant strikes landed, 724 attempted. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. I have a 50% striking accuracy clip here at light heavyweight where the guys are a little bit bigger. The volume is not as much as some of the lighter divisions. Rakic is a huge guy for the weight class. I'm not saying he's a heavyweight, but he, I, I'm not saying he's a middleweight either. This guy is a true light heavyweight. and Rakic, from what we've seen, he has been able to kind of control fights. He's not a guy that's necessarily going out there chasing the finish at times. He kind of sits back and just bang leg, bangs leg kicks all day long, which is one of my concerns 
in this matchup is that this could end up being a rather boring fight. But I don't think we're going to see that because with Yuri getting his lead leg torn up by uh, by Alex Pineda in, in his most recent outing, I think he knows coming into this matchup, Rakic is going to look to do that, and Yuri's going to have to put, a, put his foot on the gas a little bit. But when we get into some of the some of the numbers here, significant strikes by target, 58% to the head, 17 to the body, 25% to the legs. So he's predominantly a guy, like, like, like I was telling you, man, he is going to look to attack the Yuri, uh, Yuri Proska's legs. If you don't think that that's going to happen, then I don't know what to tell you because it is going to happen. He has absolutely thunderous leg kicks. We, and if you're landing them on Jan Blahovic, you're going to be landing them on Yuri Prohaska because Jan is incredibly defensively sound against leg kicks. Now, Jan was checking some of them, but that did not discourage uh, Alexander Rakic. But if we look at the past three fights, right, I don't like to go too deep into the resume of, of, of the previous fights. You know, his last time out was May 14th of 2022 against Jan Blahovic where he lost. It's a TKO, but it, it really isn't, right? It was... Rakic steps back, his knee buckles, and he blows that thing out, and we haven't seen him since. So there's that question mark coming into this matchup is when a guy has a long layoff due to injury, what do they look like when they come back? And that's going to be a big question that we're going to have uh, in terms of what kind of Alexander Rakic do we see. Then it goes back to 2021 when he fights Tiago Santos, where we've seen a lot of guys getting the better of Tiago Santos kind of towards uh, later into his UFC tenure. Then he goes back against Anthony Smith back in 2020, where he just dismantled him with leg kicks and wins a decision again against Santos, a decision. So if you one thing about Alexander Rakic that I pointed out to you, he's not exactly the most exciting guy. When he decides to bite down and come forward and let some things fly, he's dangerous and he lands some great shots. But what we've seen in these three fights is a guy that's just content sitting on the outside, banging leg kicks and winning a decision. Now, I do believe if he's going to win this fight, it's going to come from compromising the movement of Yuri Prohaska and not being afraid to throw some things at Yuri when Yuri tries to close him down. Because when we look at it, when we look at Yuri Prohaska, this is a man that has 25 knockouts, 23 first round finishes. Yuri Prohaska is incredibly dangerous. He's one of the most dangerous guys in the division. Now, one thing I do want to point out about both of these guys. They do have a, a suspect resume, per se, since they've been in the UFC. When we look at the competition that they have fought, it's not exactly the cream of, uh, of the crop in terms of the light heavyweight division. But a lot of that has to do with the light heavyweight division has been lacking for quite some time. And Yuri Prohaska, with 25 finishes by knockout, 23 first-round finishes, I think we're going to see an aggressive Yuri in this fight. He knows, one— He's going to be pissed off to come into this one and look look to put a statement, you know, knowing what happened last time against Alex Pereira in that vacant title fight. He wants to get back in position to have another crack at the title because depending on what happens between Pereira and Jamal Hill, it's possible with a win we could see Yuri get a rematch against Pereira or fight uh, Jamal Hill next. So there's a lot at stake in this matchup, to be honest with you guys. But when we talk about Yuri, 56% striking accuracy, 200, 260 landed, 467 attempted. Yuri Prohaska is a sharpshooter. I know he has a weird style. His hands are down. He moves weird. And it, he's a very unorthodox guy. But one thing about Yuri, he has crazy power in his hands. And his shots come from really odd angles. With his hands being at his hips, he's kind of waving his hands around and just shooting his hands out from really wherever, whenever which is incredibly hard for people to pick up on. And if you don't seem to take away the base of Yuri Prohaska, he's going to have a lot of success in terms of the striking. But we have seen if you are not afraid to go after Yuri, you can put him in a lot of danger. We saw that with Glover Teixeira. Now, I know the difference is Glover has the takedown threat. He has the submissions in his back pocket where that's not as much of a threat with Alexander Rakic. But I think we're going to see a very aggressive Yuri in this matchup. But it's going to come down to Yuri defending those leg kicks of Rakic because that is absolutely going to be Rakic's game plan and best weapon heading into this matchup. But when we look at this here, 5.3 significant strikes landed per minute, five point, um, basically 5.2 absorbed, that's kind of dangerous. And that's what we've seen about with Yuri in all of his fights. Despite him losing to Alex Pineda, the fights before – he was losing to Glover Teixeira until he kind of pulled out that Hail Mary submission at the end there. He was getting kind of tagged up a little bit by Dominic Reyes until he started to kind of control the fight and land that nasty spinning, uh, that nasty spinning elbow. Like, we have seen that Yuri is very dangerous. 
But what we have seen is Yuri's style is kind of that 50-50 style where he leaves himself open to be countered and hurt badly. And that's kind of concerning coming into a matchup with a guy like Rakic who's going to take away your base. And if he catches you off balance, he's going to be able to land some of those power shots with his hands. Because Yuri is one of those guys, when we look at the significant strikes by target, when we look at the stats here, 82% to the head. He's absolutely a headhunter, which has always been one of my one of my gripes with Yuri. He doesn't mix up the targets very well. While he is very powerful, while he does have crazy movement, and he's very unpredictable. He kind of is predictable in a way in terms of he's a headhunter. But one thing about Yuri in this matchup, I do think that he's going to look to switch stances. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a lot of him at a southpaw in this matchup to try to take away that lead leg opportunity that Rakic can have to bang leg kicks from the outside. But if I'm Yuri Prohaska, I'm getting in the face of Rakic. I'm backing him up and I'm making him predictable because if Yuri's able to do that, I think he can land some really good straight shots on Alexander Rakic because Rakic, we saw in the matchup with Jan Blachowicz, he's there to be hit as well. He's not some wizard in terms of the defense. He's not a guy that's running around on the outside like Adesanya kind of picking and poking at you. He's there to be countered. So if I'm Yuri Prohaska, I'm choosing my times and my moments to bite down and shoot good straight uh, backhands in it, whether he's out of the southpaw stance or whether the orthodox stance throwing that right or left hand down the pipe. That's going to be the money shot for Yuri Prohaska in this matchup. But when we get into the last three fights, well, actually, we could go into four because that's all that Yuri has had. That's what I was telling you. It feels like Yuri's been in the UFC for a lot longer than he, than he has. But his first fight against Volkan Uzdemir gets a second round knockout. But really, when we're looking at that, it's Volkan Uzdemir. Then he goes on, faces Dominic Reyes. He was, like I said, Dominic Reyes was having a lot of success until Yuri was able to kind of close him down, land that spinning elbow. Then he goes out there in a five-round uh, fight with, with Glover Teixeira, pulls off that submission at the end. If that went to the scorecards, it was probably going to go to Glover, I would like to think. Then he goes out there and gets knocked out by Alex Pineda. And I know people are going to point out early stoppage. They're going to point out some of those different things. The bottom line is it was a good shot by uh, Pineda, and he was countered. Now, that's where Yuri's going to have to be cautious because if he does get aggressive and does look to close the distance, to land some of those shots to avoid just sitting at range, getting leg kicked all day by Rakic. He needs to be cautious when closing the gap. Because one thing about Yuri, while his hands are down and it creates unique angles in terms of, of, of his hands and how he's going to be able to land some of those combinations, we've seen him uh, left very open to be countered by the counter boxing of his opponent. We saw Alex Pineda do that. We have seen him get clipped by Glover Teixeira. We've seen Dominic Reyes land some good shots. Nonetheless, this is an outstanding matchup between two explosive guys that fight very differently, that are going to look to do very different things to win this fight. But I think this is a huge matchup at light heavyweight because Rakic was supposed to fight Jan Blahovic. Blahovic got uh, hurt, I believe, so they, you know, he pulled out. So then they booked this matchup for UFC 300. I think there's a lot of stakes on this matchup, guys, because I think if Yuri Prohaska can go out there and knock out Alexander Rakic, I think that he can get a rematch against Pineda or fight Jamal Hill for the strap next. And then Rakic, he goes out there and gets a heck of a KO against Yuri. Who's to say that he doesn't get another opportunity? I know Mag Magomed and Goliath is looming kind of in the balance there, but the UFC doesn't seem too keen on him get getting a title shot. But I want to hear what you all think about this matchup down in the comments. Like this video, drop your prediction below who you have in this matchup. If I had to lean towards someone, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, Rakic, considering how good he is with the leg kicks. But again, we have to see what he looks like coming back from a long layoff. But uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this. I appreciate you all. See you next time.